Nobody takes long vacations in America. Nobody. It just doesn't happen. A week here, a week there, that's standard. In Russia, for example, people take a month-long vacation, and it's normal. This vacation is two and a half weeks long, and that's so unusual. I decided to go to Portugal, the land of good food and the land of expired imperial ambitions. I'll spend there two and a half weeks. Two and a half. There are several things that attract tourists to Portugal. One is cheap quality food. Number two is port wine, of course. And number three is Fado music. Fado music is a Portuguese version of country or folk music. It's something similar to a French chanson and Russian romance type of music. It is usually performed by one woman wearing black. It is sad and nostalgic. They sing about, about fate which means fado in Portuguese, about power and ruthlessness of the ocean, about the love that, that is gone and is never coming back, about the hopes that never materialize, about the homes that get destroyed. Usually it's very sad and depressing. Nevertheless, it's supposed to be beautiful and powerful. Сказать, чтобы место ухоженное, так нет. Достаточно run down все, но при этом нету ощущения гетто, нету ощущения преступности, нету бездомных, нету такой уж грязи. Portugal is a tiny country, and they were able to conquer territories of vast proportions compared to their own size, not because they were nicest people. They were mean, greedy, smart, and ruthless. Aloha spirit does not take you far when it comes to imperial ambitions. As Hawaiians, they know. You can still feel that mean bone in them. They rely on tourists now. They have to be nice, but it's an effort. They can't smile and they can't say, hi, how are you doing, how can I help you? They have to twist their whole inner Portuguese self to do that. It is nice to have other nations to finance your prosperity. They're used to that luxury for many generations. They probably miss it a lot. <laughs> Действительно, еда здесь, еда очень вкусная, необычная. Какие-то непонятные флейверы, нам непривычные, конечно. Еда не русская в Португалии. Ну, есть можно или нет? Нет. Ничего нет. Пиклд, все такое, какой-то немножко different spices они используют. Картохи нет. Но, в принципе, очень вкусно. А самое главное, что здесь дешево. Мы могли это поесть все в шестером какую-то довольно изысканную еду, какие-то деликатесы за вонючие там какие-то 100 долларов с чаевыми, с пивом, со всеми делами. Ну как это? Почти вкусно. There is no such thing as tourist trap in Portugal when it comes to restaurants. 
hundreds of restaurants clumped together in a huge warehouse like this one. And you can pick each and any of them and uh, be pretty much guaranteed that food is going to be exceptional. There's no reason to Yelp things here, there's no reason to check for the reviews. That's just a waste of time. Lisbon was almost leveled by a devastating earthquake in 1755. Almost, but not, not quite. This whole neighborhood called Alfama survived the earthquake and is almost unchanged since it was built in the 12th century by Moors. The most interesting thing about Alfama is that it is still a neighborhood populated by relatively poor people. They go about their business trying to ignore hordes of tourists. <laughs> Street music is everywhere in Lisbon, but it's not Fada. I really don't think so. I'll keep looking. Portuguese realized quickly that it is much cheaper to maintain skilled navy and to control trade routes around the world and benefit from it rather than fight lengthy and expensive wars on the continental Europe. Tradition, by the way, that was maintained by them all the way through the Second World War, when under the rule of Salazar, Portugal was able to avoid the carnage of Second World War and to remain neutral all the way to the end. Not a small credit to Salazar diplomatic skills. It was Henry the Navigator who perfected this concept and laid the foundation of Portugal's domination at sea. It was him who spearheaded the creation of a faster and lighter and more maneuverable ship called Caravan. Not only it was lighter and faster, it could also sail against the wind, which was unheard of at the time. It was him who created the first school of navigation at Sintra to train future captains. He can probably be compared to Steve Jobs of Apple computers, as he was able to single-handedly change the way people did business for generations to come. cute, but definitely not part of music. I'm really scared. And it's pointing down. So you can tell on the castle. А ты по-русски хочешь, чтобы я говорила по-английски? Не важно. Да, по-английски. Короче говоря, правая часть это оригинальная. The right side is the original from the 12th century. 
you can see like the more stern lines of the medieval architecture and then on the left hand side that's from the 17th century where they added the more ornamental Петюлечки ставят. Сейчас мы находимся в такой деревне. Называется... Ивай, как она называется? Томар. Томар. Которая замечательна тем, что здесь есть средневековый замок, который основали крестоносцы типа в 12 веке. The city itself was built by Templars, the Crusaders. Interestingly, they did not mind a huge Jewish community at their doorstep in the city of Tomar. It was a center of several crusades. Cross that was painted on every sail of the caravel that Henry the Navigator built is actually a symbol of Tomar's authority. For several centuries, Crusaders and Jews lived in harmony. This has changed in 1496 when Inquisition came to Portugal. About a thousand Jews were ordered to leave the city and their property got expropriated by Holy Inquisition. It didn't matter whether you were converted, convertos, or morano, or a practicing Jew. Everybody was kicked out all the same. There are no Jews now in Tomar. second largest city in Portugal. It is home to 300,000 people. It's a major tourist attraction. We gotta find Fado music here. I don't know anymore.
It's actually a video. It's all about port wine, though. Locals would disagree. They think there is more to Porto than that. I really don't think so. Take the red, put the white, then I put the white, take the red, put the white, take the red, always like this. They push it pretty hard. So sometimes it's cute, wine. sometimes it gets annoying a little. 20 years will buy you a pretty generous set of six different ages of portals to try. When you're done, you definitely notice it. Okay, so you're completely off. <laughs> the first one was 20. Oh, really? The second one was 7. And the last one was 30. So you were complete. You didn't even get an enemy. Так что, Любань, ты вообще не угадал? Unlike Lisbon, Porto did not get leveled by, by an earthquake. But I swear to God, you would think they, they just had a big one. They certainly pushed that line of medieval charm into a shithole territory, where you kind of start wondering. But I wish them the best. They, it, it seems like they're working on it. They don't make Porto here, they only age it here. They make it 60 miles up the river in the Douro Valley. If that bridge reminds you of something, don't kill yourself over it. Eiffel built it. Yep, that same Eiffel. You can take a quick tour and the view is absolutely spectacular. The Aloha guy is cute, but again, it's not Fada. We um, Bashkinazi. Where? Abidosh. Abidosh. Driving down the freeway, you will see many signs that say in Portuguese it says something historic and there's a little cartoonish castle that means that there is something interesting in this town and it is worthwhile uh, seeing don't even hesitate take their word for it it is interesting Дай себе по голове мечом. This town of Abidosh was founded by Celts 2,000 years ago. It was ruled by Romans, Visigoths and Moors. It is interesting that since then it didn't grow much uh, outside of the city walls. The town itself is tiny. We got lucky there were not too many tourists in there. Even though all the guides, all the tourist books were saying that it is usually crowded and uh, narrow streets are overwhelmed by tourists. We didn't see it. And again this girl has 
interesting as she is, I don't think it's father music. The search is on. Not to be overlooked is the third and the most popular attractions of the Portugal after sardines and medieval castles and wine, of course is 600 miles of the coast which is absolutely gorgeous we didn't get all that lucky the water was freezing cold and it was windy but i'll take everybody else's word for it it gets pretty nice here sometimes we were able to enjoy the boat trip to the local caves They were telling us bullshit stories about the pirates, but it's fine. Вокруг лодки! Still, no father music. I'll give you a couple of euros, but no. Yeah, Very good looking guy, but no. Definitely not. If this bridge reminds you of Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco, don't be surprised, the same people build it. They used to call it Salazar Bridge, because it was spearheaded by his efforts. Now they call it the independence bridge or some, some, something or other, but um, Salazar is not popular now in Portugal. A lot of Portuguese experience is, is nostalgia for lost world dominance. They saw it come and go. They, they look at the Americans all rich and cocky and successful, powerful, and they kind of smile inside and think, well, it's your turn now, but don't get used to it. Я с надеждой притормозил возле этих музыкантов, они мне очень понравились, классные ребята. Я думаю, может быть, они, может быть, эта музыка и есть фада. Но на этом месте, но на этом месте я понял, что вряд ли про Чегевару пели одинокие португальские женщины. 
Everything is hand picked, hand produced. The machinery doesn't go up there, so it's a very unique wine. So in Portugal, most of our wines are red. And what's special about port wine is it's fortified. It means that. To be fair to, to wine, Portugal, all 380 Jews that lived spirit. in Portugal at the beginning of the war lived to see the end of it. Salazar did not cooperate with Hitler. Not only that, but about 100,000 Jews from Hungary and France were able to get Portuguese visas and escape Nazis. Marc Chagall was one of them. And that's not the end of the story. In 2015, Portugal passed the law that allowed all the descendants of the Jews that were persecuted by Inquisition 500 years prior to regain their Portuguese citizenship. And about 10,000 people got their citizenship under that law. By the way, this was Fado. <laughs> 